What's up, everybody? We're back at it again with another Ready or Not video, and we got some more news. Dev Block 3 finally got released. It's called Going Dynamic. It says that it's posted on March 11th, but today's the 10th. That's weird, unless my computer's wrong. Anyhow, Ready or Not is live and well. We've been very busy at Void Interactive and plans haven't changed. In fact, they've been expanded upon. Now let's get to the good stuff. As is standard with all of our posts, the scenes are in game and real time using the assets you'll be playing with when the game is released by the way all of the watermarked ready or not images are 4k you should be able to download them straight off the page where have our updates been? While the whole crew here are looking forward to showing you all of the content our game has to offer, showcasing this work takes a lot of time. It can prove difficult to put development on hold and focus on dev block due to the size and speciality of our team. However, despite the size, this year is looking very exciting if you're interested in Ready or Not. And then they show a picture, which is a very, very nice picture. Whoa. Artificial Intelligence For the last year, we've been writing Suspect and SWAT AI that will challenge the player and act realistically. Our Suspect AI can surprisingly be spontaneous and very lethal. For example, failure to restrain a suspect may result in them getting up when the SWAT are no longer around and finding something to defend themselves with. Ooh, shit! Players will have to be strategic and mindful of their surroundings and use the tools provided to ensure rooms are safe before and during entry. For single player, players will be placed in the shoes of a SWAT team leader with four officers under your command. The AI for our SWAT needed to be both robust and independent in the sense that they will act in a manner that conveys a high level of tactical training. Willis also being able to act dynamically if needed. This means realistic entry techniques, holding smart angles when waiting for commands, and so on. SWAT will drop chem lights in cleared rooms. Ooh, just like how it did in SWAT 4. Make arrests and collect evidence in their vicinity upon command if the area is clear. In the below footage, the suspect falls and rolls behind a vending machine to take cover. As I'm transitioning from my sidearm to my rifle, one of the officer engages the suspect before he has a chance to shoot at me. There are a couple of features you can see in this. Ricochet showcasing hitting the screen that were entirely random and not planned. So this is the video that he's talking about. Now as you can see, when he aims and you zoom it in just a little bit, you can actually see him rolling. That's actually, fuck it. That's nice. Alright, moving on. As is standard with any police tactical shooter, the player's team can also employ breaching methods such as C2, Ooh, C2, we're bringing it back! Charges or door rams, as well as deploy grenades into a room to clear it before entry. SWAT will also start off in stealth mode, where the row or ROE, is shifted to force them to call contacts to the team leader before engagement. The officers keep their voice low in this state. Oh, this reminds me of, um... Brothers in Arms, like, the, the very third one, when they're not in combat, they keep their voice low, like, okay. Like that. In this state, to ensure they're not heard, they'll also be less likely to initiate combat unless put in danger. During combat, the team will shift to dynamic mode. The team will become more likely to engage targets if seen and take more aggressive angles. This mode can also be employed immediately after the element leader's command. A new feature we've added to Ready or Not is the inclusion of Go Codes. Players can separate their element into blue and red, order them to take different entry points on a room or rooms and then initiate the breach as the element known as gold. The breach can be initiated on a single group as well, allowing the remainder of the allowing the remainder of the unit to cover a different location such as a hallway or exit. And then they show another clip. Oh my god, this game looks so sexy. I can't wait to play this. Holy shit. Look at that. Wait, what did that say? Report dead suspect. Continuing on, naturally, we also have a civilian AI system that will act unpredictable during gunfights. Some will panic when shots ring out. If they find a clear exit, the civilians may try to run away from the combat to avoid being killed. It's best to get control of the civilians as soon as possible by any means. Our AI systems also take cover based on object height, weight, and strength, and will attempt to confuse the player by peeking out and then readjusting to find a better fighting position if possible. Ooh, my god look at this picture holy cow his eye is just coming out of his freaking and look at his hand his hand looks like it's a bone what the fuck 
Motion capture. We've invested in a high-end optical motion capture cameras used on titles such as Star Citizen, Metal Gear Solid 5, etc. Our animator has been hard at work setting up all of the necessary tools to record and process the vast amount of animations we require for Ready or Not. So far, the results have proven to be incredible. With a high frame rate output and minimal cleanup, the plan will be to use tools to their maximum ability, meaning we're planning on also recording facial motion capture and recording some truly long and truly gruesome animations. Ooh, I'm so giddy. Below, we posted an example of the motion capture that we recorded on day one. It's short, but it'll give you an idea of what to expect. And this is another unlisted video. How many unlisted videos do these people have? Like, what the hell? Animations. Our animations have been improved drastically. The team is aiming to make the game world free, even more real with a variety of new artistic features. On the first person front, every animation is created at 240 FPS, and the weapon models have been rigged so that they loosely shake and jolt in the appropriate location during gunfire. This is inspired heavily by Killing Floor 2 and the first person animations. We've introduced some procedural animations to our workflow. For example, our animations are layered with randomized node based system with which creates a very realistic and very unpredictable method of shake when an officer fires rapidly. These can be adjusted based on the weapon, its weight, and what attachments have been placed on it, as well as officer condition. Third person animations have received similar treatment, with a series of hit reactions being added for SWAT suspect and civilian alike. This is based entirely upon where the subject is shot. This also includes death animations, which we are currently work which are currently works in progress. Then they show another video. Ooh boy, this looks nice. Gameplay. The importance of expanding our reload system became clear to the combat in Ready or Not. Players can swap mags by pressing the reload key, but now also have the ability to perform quick reload by double tapping the same key. Oh, nice. This is what I wanted in SWAT. This will quickly eject the mag onto the floor and allow players to quickly resume combat in the event they can't afford to waste time replacing magazines in their kit. This reload technique is a lot faster by about 35 to 60 percent, and the dropped magazines can be reclaimed once combat is ceased. On top of this, players can hold R to check their magazine capacity as well as ammo type. The magazine will accurately show ammo quantity and type as well as providing a prompt with the weight of the magazine. Whether it feels empty, feels light, feels full, etc. Here's another video. So we're shooting an MP5 inside of what looks like a gas station or a stop shop or whatever you call those things. Okay, so he actually looks at it. That's cool. Ooh. That reload though. Oh got uh, full auto semi-auto he's just shooting off the crazy man oh oh that's reloading the fast part and we got another video so in this video he's shooting a pistol and he's really mad so this is the you know the regular reload uh, magazine says that it's full regular reload And then he pulls out the stinger! Yeah! As such, we've done away with a lot of the UI shown in the development block too. Our philosophy is that less is more, in the sense that the player should be told this information passively if possible, or known it intuitively. In replacement of this UI, we've added a compass at the, the top of the screen to assist the direction giving. We've also made adjustments to our speed system, which now uses a tiered system to go to certain speeds. This means units will be provided with five paces to choose with with this scroll wheel. While this may sound a little less interesting at first, it helps to coordinate speeds with your teammates. This still allows for a wide variety of movement options during combat. We're including four grenades in Ready or Not, the Flashbang, CS Gas, Sting Ball, and Nine Bang. These will all fill a very specific role in an officer's kit, so choosing the right object for the job will be crucial. Our grenades can be thrown in both overhand and underhand methods. Some grenade effects can be mitigated by devices we provided. For example, the CS Gas can be negated 
associated with the selection of the gas mask during loadout section. Some of the flashbang and stinger effects can be mitigated if the user has the ballistic shield equipped. This also acts to protect anyone behind a shield. Particles we can use for grenades can create a very dusty and smoky environment for the team similar to real life. There are a bunch of neat features we would like to show such as our sniper teams and their ballistic systems but some of them are quite heavily work in progress so perhaps it's best if we wait for Ready or Not's gameplay trailer. And then it shows this cool picture was probably gonna be the thumbnail. I keep telling you, these guys are gonna be the bad guys. Characters. You may have noticed on our Instagram, a bunch of new images showcasing our SWAT characters and suspect characters for multiplayer. With advice from real SWAT units, we've developed a new, much more optimized officer with all gear you could expect from modern SWAT to carry. Our PvP suspects have also been developed with close attention to kit and wear. Loosely based off images of massed IRA forces, our counter operator to the police is a part of a rogue paramilitary organization with sinister motives. The beginning of the year saw our investment into scanning equipment, allowing for higher quality capture of real world suspects for use in Ready or Not. These tools have widely been used by industry giants such as Naughty Dog when working on Uncharted 4. This equipment was immediately put to use making our new SWAT player models. This equipment eventually coincided with a trip overseas where we proceeded to scan a total of 128 men, women, and children for the use of this game. This means a wide variety of character per level, more than we ever anticipated. You won't be seeing randomized heads on a small number of bodies, but a massive number of fully detailed and lovingly crafted individuals suited for each level's environment. We'd like to thank each and every one of the people who came down to scan by our team. It was a great experience for us, and we hope it was a great experience for you too. And then it shows a picture of like the people that are scanned. I think what bothers me the most is why, are they, why don't they have shoes on? That's just me. And then there's a picture of this guy. I'm not sure who this is supposed to be. Scratch that, it did show it. But it seems like they took this picture off of the website. So maybe this is a picture that we weren't supposed to see yet. Maybe that's what happened. I think I recorded the page when it came out. It's probably an important character. Travel. The core Void team came together four weeks in New Zealand to work on the game and bond. We set goals, connected with some associates, and overall had a good trip. One of the big aspects of our trip was playtesting, where we hosted a LAN and had a series of people jump on for some co-op and a team deathmatch madness. The results we got from the testers was great. It's one on a long list of trials we need to put the game through to get it to the standard we are going to reach. While there were numerous gameplay and design tweaks needed to hit the correct pace, we discovered ready or not runs very smoothly on a variety of different setups that is in multiplayer expect to get a good use out of your 144 hz monitor note that this may change but so far good the levels are able to easily handle from 50 to 70 ai as well which opens up a lot of possibilities for the title and anyone making levels in the future another huge aspect of our trip was finalizing our game story we can't divulge any further yet but we think you'll like it that's it from the void team for now you've got a very busy time ahead of us but we keep everybody up to date as best as we can be sure to follow us on twitter facebook and instagram for the updates signing off void interactive and then it shows a picture of the void team but their faces are all scrambled out so what was the point of that <laughs> all right well whew, that was a lot of information right there man i can't ooh, 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 ooh. we got it we got it finally got another update holy shit it's been a year coming well thanks everybody for watching i will catch you in the next one Bye bye <laughs>